Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast. We're talking about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin. Don't mess with my data analysis skills, Bird, and Uncle Lumberlord Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related, and Nutsack, the last EDC bag you will ever want or need. Today, we are talking about biker tech, what we like, what we don't, and what we want to see in the near future. What's going on, dudes? What's up? You didn't even say data right. And? You're wrong. <laughs> so is it data or data? Yes. Depends on who you're talking to and what context you're using it in. Mm-hmm. I'm just making that shit up. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's how I use it. Tomato, tomato. I, I've, I've said data and data the two different ways in the same sentence before i've used it like data for data center and data when talking about like data i I don't think i have any sort of like standards on how it's used i think just (laughs) however it rolls off the tongue better um so lumber lord now (laughs) yeah yeah. tell us the story behind that so justin you actually couldn't join us because you had family or something in town right Yes, I had my mother-in-law in in town. So Ken, myself, Hasso, Team Bradley, and the wives, uh, we all went out to do the axe throwing. And turns out Uncle Ken is the master of axe throwing. The lumber lord. Shocker. He was the lumber lord. And he he threw a bullseye, I would say, 90% of every time he threw. And then there's the well, lady. He lived in Montana. So. Well, yeah. Got skills. Um, <laughs> what you going to do about it? <laughs> so because he won, there was like a bet from the lady who was kind of running the show. She's like, if you can hit a bullseye in one throw, you can put this stamp on anyone you want. <laughs> and it can go anywhere you want. Well, she did make a stipulation. Oh, it had to be above the ab- belt line, above the belt, and below, below the mid thigh. Mid thigh, yeah. <laughs> so you can put on anybody's ass. Um, but if he missed, everyone got to choose where on him the stamp went. The he fell into that ten percent when he threw because <laughs> yep. he, he just missed the uh, by an eighth of an inch. Yeah, the, the bullseye. So he ended up getting a tramp stamp of lumber lord. Yeah. I, I tried to, to, you know, make the proposition of how much would it cost to get that done for real. And he said we couldn't afford it. So. Oh, yeah, y'all can't afford it. Yeah, he said six figures. I'm like, well, that's starting just, Starting six figures. That's rude. Well, starting six figures is only 100 grand. Okay. <laughs> so only 100 grand. <laughs> can we do like a 40-year payment plan? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I would do it for like 40K. Mm, I don't know. I could. I mean, it's your lower back. Like, how many times is that going to be seen? Well, think about it. If you did it for forty k, I mean, it'd be a. I'd, I'd get that tattoo. It, it would cost you what two hundred, three hundred bucks to get it done. Nah, nah it cost more than that. It cost you a thousand, two thousand to have it taken off. You're still up. How would fuck? Ooh, how would have it taken off? That hurts Hell. so much more. I'm just saying. Do you know the science behind that? Uh, we got some time. This is a shorter episode. I'm going to go into it. So <laughs> the reason they, I always thought that the lasers burnt it off. No. No. The laser, the reason they use lasers is because they can pinpoint the actual ink. Pigment. Pigment. Yeah. And it basically explodes it the ink pigment. Yes. So your vaporizes. white blood cells, it's small enough for your white blood cells to eat it. Yep. That's why tattoos fade is because your white blood cells will go in and eat anything that's small enough for them to eat because they recognize it as a foreign object. Right. So the laser, it heats up one side really hot and it gets so hot since the other side's cold, it actually splits it. It's kind of like a yeah. reaction. Just and that's why you got to go back multiple times too, yep. depending on the color. I was like, that, that fucking blew my mind. Yeah, that's what that pop is. Yep. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, Your God. skin cells vaporizing around. Hell, that's that why, pigment. like, I was watching. I was like, I don't, I can't even fathom hating a tattoo that much to where you want to do that. Like, maybe an ex's name. I could see that. What, but what? just cover it up. <laughs> who would put their woman's name on their body? A really dumb, idiotic, redneck motherfucker. God damn, who would do that? Yeah. Like, kid. Probably a Harley, Harley riding douchebag, for yeah, sure. Probably. Well, 
one of us, one of these Harley riding douchebags did it. I won't yeah. put a woman's name in my body. No, nope. period. Unless it's like my niece or yeah, I guess you like a daughter. If or, we adopted a daughter, I'd put or your her mom. Name. Or no. Something like that. no, well, I have my mom tattoo. Oh yeah, it just says mom. It says mom. <laughs> that one says dad. God. <laughs> Is that so they're always giving you a hug? You can just yeah. Is that your jerking hand? <laughs> oh, yeah, which daddy. you jerk off with your dad or your mom? <laughs> I, I'm a switch hitter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Threesome. <laughs> Keeping it in the family. <laughs> All right. Bringing wow. this back into the topic. <laughs> I think the first five minutes of the episode is the best. I think people click off the episode after our initial bullshit. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in for this episode. <laughs> Lumberlord signing off. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of tech out there. And, you know, we see it with GPS units. We see it with Lasers. stereos and shit like that on bikes. But we're starting to see a lot of tech hitting kind of like what we wear, like our helmets. Wearables. Wearables. Um, let's talk about the Jarvis Jarvish, Jarvish, ish, uh, X A R helmet. Now, <laughs> I'm going to go through. Why are you laughing already? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go through the specs. Now, there's the X and the X A R. So I have to go through the X because it's all of that plus some shit for the A R. Does that stand for assault rifle? Does it have? Does it shoot five five six? No, it stands for augmented reality. Oh, so it's not real. Well, it's augmented. So what you're seeing is it's not real. So we're protected by holograms? Yes. Okay. All right. So the Jarvis X, which is $449, it is CNS, ECE, and DOT certified. What the fuck is CNS? I was going to say, what the fuck is CNS? Is that like the Chinese national standard? Uh, I'm, Are you Googling it? I'm going to okay. Google it. All right. You Google that. Um, but it's a pure carbon shell helmet. Now, they're not saying carbon fiber, which... I don't know if it's inferred that it's carbon fiber or not, but it has Bluetooth connectivity, Amazon Alexa, a 2K helmet camera, anti-fog visor, active noise cancellation, a instant built-in voice commands, IPX6 waterproof system design, the Jarvish app, (laughs) inbuilt. (laughs) <laughs> not built in. It's not built, built in. It's inbuilt <laughs> navigation, uh, quick removal, inner lining, auto sensing power on and off, and wireless charging. So that's okay. the X model. The XAR has all of that, plus an AR projections, which augmented reality, um, a retractable heads up display, and rear facing camera. All for one thousand dollars. <laughs> wow! I also looked up the IPX6 waterproof because I'm really interested to see, you know, when people say waterproof, how waterproof it is. And the IP, hold on, it changed pages because it said sixty-five and sixty-seven, right? IP6X. Um, this one says completely dust height, and it is also can resist water jets of extremely high pressure. But the one right above that, the IPX8 or IPX7 can be submerged in water. So it can't be submerged. It can just be sprayed with high pressure, so which makes sense. Array. I mean, high you're not going to be swimming. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to be swimming in your motorcycle helmet. Yeah. But I mean, when you're talking about like the comms unit and stuff like that, like sure. you might drop it in a, you know, when you're puddle of water, puddle of water or something. So yeah. That makes more sense. All right, so I fa- so I found it. Okay, what what the a CNS? CNS rating is? That's what uh, the rating for Taiwan. Okay, okay, which makes sense because Jarvish is out of Taipei, so this is a Taiwanese company, and we I found this the stat or specs for this on Kickstarter. Yes. Now, interestingly enough, from Kickstarter, they were only trying to raise fifty thousand, and. Hmm. Which I, makes me think they have other backers. Yeah, but it got blown out of the water. Really? Yeah, like insane. Um, I want to say in the 600,000 oh. range. <laughs> Damn. Um, well, think about it. If you want the XAR, 
that thousand dollar price point is the Kickstarter price point. Yeah, that's the early bird cost. Okay, wow. so let's let's go into this. Um, why do you like it or hate it? And I'm going to start with Justin. Oh, can you go back up to the specs? Yeah, so I can see it. So I will say that I'm not a huge fan of these smart helmets. I I think I've vocalized that quite a few times. I feel like they're a little bit out there, but this one has been the closest one to me saying that's cool I want that Mm -hmm. I actually even sent an email to this company like six months ago and got completely ghosted but (laughs) I think that (laughs) they are closing in on what it should be in a smart helmet did you watch the YouTube video of this helmet pretty sure I did Um, where it has the, the lady doing the commands and the HUD retracts and yeah. everything off a of voice command off a of voice command i think that's pretty dope and we're well, seeing a 2k helmet camera so finally something that's actually worth it granted like we've talked about previously 2k does not mean that's going to be you can have 2k jarvish quality and 2k gopro quality yeah. and they're going to be completely yeah. different but 2k is just 1440 it all it is is a res- resolution yeah that's all it is so I mean, you've seen the $100 4K Walmart TVs and the $4,000 Samsung 4K TVs. There's a difference, even though they have the same pixels. Right. So, I mean, kind of take that with with a grain of salt. Bluetooth connectivity, obviously, that's going to be a necessity. Um, The active noise cancellation, I think that's pretty dope. I think that's something that needs to be more integrated into helmets these days. I mean, we've got the technology since what? the late 90s early 2000s i mean yeah when yeah. was the bose quiet comfort when was yeah, the first right. series for that early 2000s i say i was in yeah. elementary when that stuff started coming out so yeah we were knee deep in the desert yeah yeah kicking indoors and fucking horse so well actually pretty accurate <laughs> um so it's going back to the cameras though yes it is a 360 view yes and which i also think is pretty dope so yeah so you know they're 180 180 degree views mm-hmm. on both cameras. So that's kind of cool. But how does it actually help you? Is it coming through the HUD? It can. Okay. You can have the rear come through the HUD. I've, you know, been vocal. I, I don't think that's something necessary. I mean, we have mirrors for that. Yeah. I would like to run those all the time as a dash cam. Dash cam. Yeah. So even if I'm not motor vlogging, because let's face it, 98% of people are not going to be motor vlogging. They're not going to have a, a camera on their helmet already. That is just an added extra security, which is, I think, going to be better than a uh, any sort of dash cam because it's it's 360. So even if you get T-bone at a light, you're going to get to see literally it coming from, you know, 100 yards away. So that's kind of cool. The instant built in voice commands. I never thought that was going to reach the point that it has. But now that I've had the Cardo, the new uh, Pack Talk Bold, Mm -hmm. that shit is instant and it is dope so i mean if they're anywhere close to the pack talk bold thumbs up for that uh the jarvish app eh, i'm not a fan of proprietary I hate, apps i hate having apps yeah I, i'm really not a fan of it I'd, I'd rather see you know the android auto or apple carplay kind of built into it which it might um and then the auto sensing auto sensing power on and off i think that's a great feature i think it's a very easy feature that needs to be built into a lot of other things and of course, the wireless charging is yes awesome. I think I think we'll see that a lot more often in all sorts of tech. I mean, you can go to IKEA and get freaking tables with the wireless chargers built into them now. Which yeah. I begged my wife to get one. She she wouldn't do it. So. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. There must be a specific place on the helmet you have to sit it on the Qi charger for that to work. But I'm I'm yeah. sure it's probably on the the back of the neck. Is where I'm assuming it yeah. would be. Just kind of set it as long as that piece makes contact with that. Yeah. So I don't like the fact that it just says Bluetooth connectivity. Does that is that to mean that okay you can connect to the speaker system from your phone or is that Bluetooth comms or is it all of the above? What does that That's actually mean? I mean, I would imagine that it's going to be comms on a four hundred and fifty dollar helmet that is ECE, DOT, and CNS rated that's made of carbon? Uh, I think... I'm thinking basic uh, yeah, GPS, I, phone, yeah, 
because it, well it has the built-in GPS as well so do you have to use the Jarvis app to control the GPS like to tell it where you're going or is it all voice command so there's still a lot of unknowns with this yeah. helmet yeah I think I remember this one saying that it uses the Jarvis app to read off of your whatever GPS system you like I think Okay. I remember seeing that on some video. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but I remember seeing, like, basically it would take your Google Maps or your Apple Maps or Waze, and it would just give you lefts and rights, mm. which I thought was pretty dope because that's all I want. Yeah, tell me I'm going to turn left in a mile or whatever. Turn left on X Street. That's all I want to know. And that's kind of cool because the HUD does give you the GPS stuff, like your turn by turns. Yes. So I guess it's like an arrow and with a distance. Yeah, that'd work. So, okay. So, Ken, what are your thoughts? So, so <laughs> what I wrote down was I feel like at these price points, something in there, one of those things got the short end, a.k.a. the cheap end of the stick. Yeah. I mean, at $449 and you – and go ahead and scroll back up. Mm -hmm. You know, you're getting, of course, a helmet – Bluetooth, the anti-fog, anti-scratch shield, a camera. I, I mean, there's so much in there. But so if you look at it, though, what does Senna's super special helmet cost? Because it has a Bluetooth, it has a camera, it has noise cancellation in there or noise reduction. I mean, there's so much going on on the on the Senna side. Well, actually, I actually already have the Senna page up. So I, I like where they're, where they're going with it. I like the idea of a smart helmet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, having you know navigation in there, a little heads up display, you know, telling you which way to turn or what your speed limit is or whatever. I mean, I kind of dig that, you know. But I feel like something on there, whether it's the helmet itself. I mean, they're using cheap ass, fake ass carbon fiber, or some something in there is getting the cheap end of that. Also, I just looked up on their website; it is actual real carbon fiber, so it's not that. It's not just carbon; it's actual carbon fiber. Okay, so it's not a sticker. Correct. Well, that's cool. Are you trying to find prices on this? Yeah. <laughs> Buy now. I don't, Good. Yeah, you gotta go. To, yeah, I gotta go to a different website for that. <laughs> but I mean, I like the idea of a smart helmet. So okay, so you know, a lot of the same stuff that they're offering in that four fifty you can get from Senna for four ninety nine. So I think they're hitting the same price point, but that carbon fiber piece, this is not yeah. a carbon fiber helmet. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm kinda with you. Who's getting which which product that they've put in here is getting the short end. Yeah. But the other side of it is if they're going a lot of it being proprietary they're not having to pay for licensing on all that. So that's going to save them some money. But yeah, but yeah I, I see what you're saying. But, I mean, but overall, I mean, at, at 450 bucks, I could see myself buying one of those. But that's the super early bird yeah. special from Kickstarter. Ah, it'll it go is. up. Yeah. So it'll probably be around the $600 mark. I'd still 600. I'd pay 600 bucks for that. The, the Jarvis X. Yeah. But what about the thousand dollar AR? That's where I would be at. I would pay the extra money to get the the HUD, the rear facing camera, and the AR projections. I don't know. I just would. It'd be one of those things that I would have to. It, one of those products I'm going to have to have in my hands and try on. Yeah. And even better test out. And where's the AR projection going? Is it going up on your 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 face shield, or is it just in the HUD? And that's what the projection is doing. And again, I couldn't find anything on that. I found just a short little, it looks like a, just a short little GIF, and it looks really wide, uh, but I'm not able to tell where it's projecting off of. So you can see on that, that video on the left, you can see it's got like direction, speed, it even has well, like the... But so looking at that, that GIF, that has to be on the wind, on the... Uh, I agree. It looks too big shield. to be on the HUD. Yeah. So, I mean, it's got... There's a lot going on there. It There's way too much going on, and I agree. You've got your speed. It even flashes when it recognizes a car. It flashes when you go over the speed limit. Uh, it's got the time, your God, direction. God, that thing would be flashing, be flashing on us all the, all the damn time. time. Yeah. 
I don't want it telling me you're going too yeah. fast. You're going too fast. Yeah. yeah, it even has the weather, the temperature. Yeah, I, don't, I don't need that. Nah, it's too much. So depending on how customizable that is, that would be a make or break for me. See, and if it's and if it's being reflected off the visor, not a dedicated unit, like obviously that heads up unit, which is small according to the picture. Mm-hmm. Do you, I mean that means you got to have your visor down? Yes. It doesn't have to be down all the way, or can I have it cracked? How far? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of variables there. Because yeah. I like to ride with my helmet cracked just a little bit for that extra airflow. Sure. And if that ruins it, yeah, then what's the point? Then what's the it? point in having it? You just waste all that money. Yeah. But you can say you have a super duper high tech helmet. I mean, I can fucking tell people that now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So for me, Ooh, I, I, I found out where they're going to hit the market at, though. So. The entry level is actually going to drop down. Oh wait, no, it's not. So it's four fifty right now. At yeah, so it was four hundred. It's been bumped up to four fifty after they got uh, one hundred fifty pledges. Um, but you were right; they had a fifty thousand dollars goal, and they got one hundred sixty nine thousand in the first Damn. day. Uh, the XAR will hit the market with a fifteen ninety nine price tag. Damn. Yeah, that puts they it actually out of mind. It shows that they were delivered in April, so I'm curious if anybody's actually gotten their hands on it yet. Or if it's so like they the, hit 169 the first day. The what first was, day. I, it doesn't show what they actually oh. hit. So I'm, I think I found it off the drive or something. Are you looking on Kickstarter itself? I'm just I'm scrolling through just whatever Google search popped up. Oh, just okay. to see I mean, what else I can find. $1,500, that's way out of 420000 funding on Kickstarter. How much? 420000 Yeah. Off of a fifty thousand dollars, so they made some bank. Yeah. So who are they partnering with? The helmet? Is it a helmet they made themselves? I doubt it. I don't I know. I can't see it. Probably HJC, <laughs> right? Or Scorpion. Well, aren't Scorpion helmets from HJC? I have no idea. Because HJC makes what seventy five percent of all the helmets that's on the market. Something like that. And then people just or companies just rebrand them. Yeah. And I don't know like about Harley. Scorpion, but yeah, a lot of them are Harley. Yeah. Um, and Harley will also rebrand uh, Bell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, for me, I think rider information is very important, but there's so much shit going on. There's a lot going on inside the helmet that I feel will just distract the rider. And I, I love the concept, like what Justin was saying, the concept's awesome, but. I don't think the practicality is really there. Yep. I think the the cost, especially in looking at what the uh, market price will be. Yeah, that's, that's I oof. so so based on that price, that fifteen hundred dollar price you said seventeen hundred dollars, seventeen hundred dollars. So you know that the the base model is going to jump up. Yeah, another five hundred dollars. So it'll be starting at a thousand. That sounds about right. Yeah. So also one thing I need to throw in here before we start giving any final thoughts, six hours battery left. That's not a lot. Nope. No. Nope. That's that, that around kills it for town. Me. That that's going to be the break for me. Yeah. And, and what's the charge time? I it didn't say <laughs> yeah, Pro- I, okay, probably four look, hours. You, you're not going to be able to have all that shit running and, have a long battery life unless you have some massive battery packs, which I mean, you have one attached to your helmet. Yeah. You know, if you added another one, that's just for the helmet itself. Well, actually you wouldn't, well, you wouldn't need it because you've already got your yeah, camera you running cameras and all that shit, but, but build it into the fucking helmet. Yeah. I don't care if it adds or, half a pound or what they could do instead of build it into the helmet, make it an, an accessory, an, accessory, yeah. an attachment to where it, you know, it's kind of like conf- on the it's conformed to the helmet, or you can have it slide in like the Rurox uh, communication system. I don't know if you've seen that, but it sli- it slides into the back of the helmet, almost like loading a magazine. Hmm. It, it slides in and locks. Yeah, so I mean, you could do something yeah. like that. I agree. Maybe run so they could sell extra batteries. Yeah, and you could just swap them out every six hours. Either swap them out or have it upgradable. Yeah, yeah like, like I said, you know, if it's already got a six hour battery life, you buy the additional battery pack that you know was yeah, give me the ten to, or twelve conform to the helmet. You know, looks nice, airflow, yada yada yada. Yeah, and just clicks in. I, I'd, I'm gonna be curious to see how many of these they actually sell. That's so high, man. I really, I feel like the only people that are willing to pay that much for helmets are moto vloggers. <laughs> I mean, when you account everything, yeah, you're about <laughs> right. But 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 actually, no, because 
you don't you don't know any of the specs of these cameras. Yeah. And I just think that you have so much flexibility if you throw a GoPro or a Yi or um, what's the new one from um, the DJI. DJI. Yeah. You have so much, so many more capabilities. Because now, why run 2K when you can, when you can record 4K and then have a lot of editing options if you have a rig that can handle it. Yeah. I, I just. And but, those are proven systems. That actually, everyone's seen the quality of the video, and you can place it where people actually would want to see it. Yeah, that, and you're also buying a standalone camera, so yeah, I can take say, my GoPro off and go off. anywhere with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I, I was mean, just say, like you, just like you used to do. I mean, yeah. we'd get somewhere, you'd take it off the helmet. And that was my primary camera. Yeah. yeah. But seventeen hundred dollars. I feel like the only people paying that much are professional race teams i wouldn't say racers because they don't of course they're not going to buy their own helmets but semi-professional professional racers are spending that much money for safety features and then when you get into the really hardcore adv guys that buy the top of the line schubert helmets which are around that four figure price range but they're buying it for quality and comfort yeah that's that's going to be their yeah. main their main factor i so mean i just i don't i don't see a big enough market willing to spend over four figures for tech. That's really all you're getting is tech. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, thinking about this now, with the GPS, you know it, it's not a standalone GPS unit. You're going to have to have your phone. Yeah. I guarantee it. I for mean, that's sure, what they're yeah. doing with cars nowadays even. They're t- getting rid of GPS, and you use the, the Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to connect yeah. and use your GPS that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just... I. I don't see a big enough market for them to become profitable, but I'm, I'm sure they did their market research before they, Oh, I'm, people are obviously going to buy them. That would they already yeah. have, you know? Yeah. $420,000 worth. So I mean, if you think about it, that's only 420 helmets. <laughs> if they all went for the high model. So right. I mean, if you're looking on global scale, that's really a pretty small portion. Well, and plus you have to understand too, the markup, even from the Kickstarter price point, you're probably looking at 30% markup. Oh, so how much it costs for them to make it, even if they only sell the Kickstarter ones, they still made a profit. Oh, yeah. So Maybe. <laughs> I mean, you're <laughs> talking about a lot of uh, R&D that goes into something like See, that. See, and there's a lot of stuff to go wrong on that helmet, too. Yeah. Look at Scully. I mean, Scully, yeah. it, all it takes is a little bit of a turn into the negative, and you can go downhill real quick. I mean, if I, if I drop my helmet and scratch the lens, exactly. you know, 50 bucks and I can get a new lens. Yeah. You know. Or if you drop your helmet and you hit the actual helmet portion, what, are you going to go spend another $1,700 to get another helmet? Yeah, I mean. that's. Can you imagine just insuring this helmet? You'd have to. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, there's no. You'd put it in as one of the accessories on your bike, but. That won't work. It's specifically listed in the exclusions that it, that will not be covered. You'd have to open up some type of scheduled personal property for it, which it probably still would not be that much. So like but my progressive sort of, policy covers all my safety gear. Are you sure? Because yeah. I read my my progressive policy three days ago, and it specifically says that the gear is not covered. Yeah, mine is covered. Yeah, prove it. I'll have to check mine. Yeah. yeah. I literally I just read through well. my exclusions. I did a video on it. That's the only reason why I brought it up. Mm, that's weird. Anyways, uh, let's take a break, hear from NetSack, and when we come back, let's talk about the Dainese D-Air airbag system. D. NetSack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying a Around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds, sunglasses, vape stuff, and business cards. It is great having less shit in our pockets, and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down. If you buy using our link, Nutsack will give you $5 off to enjoy a beer. Head over to nutsack.com slash B2W. That's N-U-T-S-A-C 
dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and we are back so <laughs> other expensive things for moto tech uh, the dynasty d air rider airbag system uh it's, it's they have a lot of different systems for from dynasty they have like a ski system they have a race specific system and they have the road system um, the price points, they have various styles. So uh, the jackets only, they range from 850 to $1,700. And Ooh. then they, they have a full race suit that is $2,200 to $4,500. Oh, man, I'm looking at it. Yeah. The, yeah. the Mugello R de Air suit. <laughs> da air. Da da air. air. Um, air. So I'll go through some of the specs that I was able to find on this. And oh, most help. of this was from Dionysi's website. Um, the software and its algorithm are the core of the electronic control unit. The brain of D-Air, which is a registered trademark, by the way. <laughs> Douchebag. Yeah. Okay. That detects and analyzes data from the sensors 1,000 times per per second uh, developed for o- for over 20 years and it's been adopted in moto gp races since 2007 the algorithm has been refined in order to guarantee the highest level of reliability and safety um, detection and activation thanks to its intelligent algorithm dineasy d air register trademark recognizes the dynamic of a fall and activates in the event of different hazardous situations. So I actually have kind of a cool uh, image on the website. If you're on a head-on or lateral collision, um, it'll pretty much, if you're hit from any direction, it'll kick it off. Um, If you high side or you low side, it'll kick it off as well. Yeah, they're pretty, that algorithm is pretty damn good. Yeah. Uh, Battery life eight hours in use 26 hours in standby with a four hour um, empty to fully charged time frame yeah, right. it doesn't sound terrible so let's go through this so this is the actual jacket system yeah we saw this i don't know how much you guys saw that we saw that the first year of ims they saw had it just a little bit of it yeah but we didn't stand there and no we were just kind of passing video. by yeah. as they were demonstrating it yeah I, this they're not the first ones that I've seen. Now they may have been the first. They were the one. first to so implement they, into GP. Yeah, there may be some copycats from this or something, but I I don't know if I really like an airbag system. Now this one, like you remember about well, I don't know if you remember a decade ago. You were like ten, but sixteen asshole. Um, a decade ago, I think Honda or someone came out with something where you had a tether yeah, to your I've seen bike, that. and if you if you pulled that tether too hard, it sets it off. Yeah, it was like a body airbag bubble. Yeah, and that recently popped up and on Facebook recently too. Yeah, I, and you just kind of bounced along the asphalt. Yeah, yeah, and then off a cliff, mm-hmm. and you're dead. Damn, they on got impact. They got videos on YouTube of the. The d- air racing d- airbag <laughs> from 11 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's been 20 years that it's been in MotoGP. Wow. They have reduced fatalities in MotoGP by like 200% or something like that. Like something stupid. There's only been, I think, two or three fatalities in MotoGP in the last 20 years. And well, so this has been in MotoGP for the last 12, but... I yeah. see what you're saying. But, yeah, I mean. And the one one of I don't know the other two, but one of them, the guy low-sided and basically got his head ran over. Oh, yeah. At, like, yeah. 140 Airbag's miles not going to save No. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So, okay, let's let's hear from Ken. What are your thoughts about this? I mean, I'm looking at some of these videos yeah. on YouTube. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, I just, I just. That's fucking cool. Like this guy, he just he fucking just low sided. It fucking goes off, and he fucking stood up, and he fucking pulled it off, and good yeah. to go, and was running for another bike. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. holy shit! So, 
looking at how it deploys, it kind of just wraps around your upper torso, right? And it does have a bad pr- back protector that goes all the way down your spine. Yeah, so and it also comes up around the top of the neck area. Yeah, it looks back, like, like a looks neck like, roll. looks like football pads almost yeah. Yeah. when it's fully inflated. So, Okay, so could you see yourself spending $850 to $1,700 for one of these jackets? Yes. Yeah, I could. I mean, it, it, for as long as they've been out, mm-hmm. for and I mean, you've got MotoGP racers doing it, and they're fucking flying. Yeah. Now, granted, a lot of times they're not necessarily running into stationary objects, but it happens. Hit the wall, whatever. Yeah. I mean, even when you hit that gravel trap, you're gonna be high siding. Oh, it's gonna jack you up oh, so yeah. bad. But that's amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could totally see. Him. Probably not the suit. Oh, definitely not. No. But the jacket, mm-hmm. I mean, that's fucking dope. I mean, and they have, uh, the styles of jackets they have are actually pretty nice, too. Yeah, and Dianese is dope. Yeah, it's a, it's a well-known brand. Yeah, they're top-of-the-line stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm. it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'd never really looked at these, like, watched any of the videos or anything like that. But, I mean, that's... That's some awesome technology right there. And like I said, they've been using it for how long, do y'all say? Um, like it's been 12. in MotoGP for 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. That's 12 years for them to perfect it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, they had a guy come off a bike at 189 miles an hour, oh, and he was fuck. fine. He, he literally stood up and walked back to the paddock like nothing. I mean, and it looks just like a regular, like, sport bike style yeah. riding jacket. Yeah, they're, they're super... Uh, inconspicuous yeah and I think that is I think that's where they nailed it on the market is no one's going to want to walk around with like a basically like a life jacket like they're they want it to look like a regular motorcycle jacket I think they nailed it there's a small little bump where it pretty much packs everything in and when you consider the I mean you're really paying the money to protect your body you use it once it's going to pay for itself tenfold oh absolutely so I mean and and with with those sensors working you know, yeah. hopefully they don't go off like you're just stupid and drop your bike, you yeah. know, and like fall over or whatever. Or if you're, wa- I mean, if you're walking along and you fucking slip on some gravel or some shit and oh fuck, yeah, you know. And what's cool is, yes, the one airbag is a one-time use, but you can go to a authorized reseller or authorized dealer, and they can put a new one in yeah. to your jacket. It's like a hundred bucks, right? I think so. Yeah, I think it was ninety nine dollars. So I mean, and that's reasonable. I, yeah, considering it probably saved you from. I mean, you can get a ten thousand dollar hospital bill real quick. Uh, so I mean, I mean, just just ask my wife. Yeah, how much was your wife's? Uh, if we hadn't have had insurance, we were well into the six figure range. Oh god, and that wasn't a serious like. I mean, I it mean, wasn't like a like a really catastrophic accident, but I mean, she, you know, she had she got two clipped bro- at what. 50, 45. 45 miles an hour. Yeah, her lady right turned in front of her. Yeah. And so she went flying. She went airborne over her bike and the handlebars. The bike ended up going another, like, 30 yards wow. from where she landed. But, I mean, she broke two ribs, uh, lacerated spleen, collapsed to lung. Oh, that would have protected uh, all of that. You know, and then, well, I mean, then she had, of course, road rash, uh, broken ankle. Uh, Probably still would have broken the ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything I mean, from you, the waist down you think, you know, is yeah. not going to be protected. The, the broken but ribs, collapsed yeah. lung, lacerated the spleen. The big three would have definitely been protected. Yeah. And the road rash from um, the waist, the waist up. up. Yeah. 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 Well, and she was wearing a she was wearing a motorcycle jacket. Oh, really? Wow. So she still and she still had road rash on her shoulder, but that healed up really nicely. Yeah. But she was wearing yoga pants. That didn't Oof. didn't do so well. Yeah. And tennis shoes. I was going to say, she probably wasn't wearing boots either because nope, that wearing, probably would have protected the broken ankle. Yep. Tennis shoes and yoga pants. But she had a helmet. Oh, well, Tracy was wearing boots on her accident. It's still. And her foot was still crushed. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, just imagine if she hadn't been wearing boots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Probably she may not have right had off. a foot. Yeah. My yeah. doctor said if I wouldn't have been wearing boots when I went down on my motocross accident, that there's a good chance that I would have been walking with a cane the rest of my life yeah at 16 so i mean for for that price room even a thousand dollars yeah for the just the jacket you know if if i don't have to worry about it going off if i'm a dumbass and fucking fall over a curb yeah i would i would even say like it's probably built in to resist that because i mean 
when you're talking 20 years of development, I've seen the process they use to code these algorithms and it's it takes a lot of time, but the longer you you develop it, oh, yeah. the more accurate it gets. It's yeah. just like Google searches. Like the more data that they put into it, the more accurate it's gonna get. Yeah, it, it, it looks awesome. It well, works. Plus, if you're just walking, you don't activate it. Yeah. You have it in standby. The only time you activate is when you get on the bike. Oh, she just turned it off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> that suck if you bought this $1,700 jacket, you forget to turn it on and you get in an accident. <laughs> Well, so in the video, it looked uh, like as soon as you, you take your jacket off and you go to throw it, well, <laughs> poof, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> um, no, so as soon as you like clip it, uh, it, it activates it. See, that okay. makes sense. So yeah. they, they, they put some dumbass protection in there. Good. Yeah, zip it up and you got to at least hit one button, I, you know, buckle it somewhere. Yeah. I'd like to see if it was like if it detects you're moving over a certain mile per hour that it would kick on. I guess you would still need to have some sort of clip sensor because I feel like if you had it unclipped and it went off, it might be more dangerous than it would. Good. Because, like, if you say, for example, you had it unzipped and that thing went off and, you know, slash that zipper across your face at however fast it goes, <laughs> probably wouldn't be very fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm laughing because that's some dumb shit I would do. <laughs> uh, and you know, it probably happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, During the yeah. testing? Absolutely. Because, yeah, because they were like, hey, John, put this on. <laughs> You know, and, and you know they've got a little detonator control for their testing. <laughs> Put this on. Bro, let's see if this works. Talk Bam! about some great pranks. <laughs> well, if you just override that system and just set it up to like a servo and just like have someone try it on and just boom. <laughs> You've seen those airbag videos, right? <laughs> oh, that'd be fun. Um, That's content. So let's move over to Bluetooth comms and the future of them. Now, we all know the two biggest players in the Bluetooth communications for motorcycles is going to be Senna and Cardo. Uh, and we have had the opportunity to actually play with both. Mm -hmm. um, so let's let's go into this a little bit. Um, let's say, how far do you think that they've progressed in the last 10 years? I, I would say the biggest thing that's come out over the last decade has been the the mesh. Okay. Yeah. To where uh, if one person drops. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't kill the whole group. Yeah. And you uh, can join allegedly. back in easily. But I'm still trying to learn my Cardo because I still can't connect to Tracy's Senna. Uh, oh. it's, it's definitely my issue. I just don't know how to do it. I got one you can buy for. So. <laughs> um. <laughs> But I, there's so many issues because I hate the whole, oh, you can go up to two miles or up to five miles. No, because mm -mm. we're in the hill country or in Arkansas, in Arkansas, you make a turn around the bend. You can't hear each other. It starts kind of scratching out quite a bit. Um, so if they would be more honest about. You know, it has. You know, that's flat Earth. Yeah, and give us a range. Yeah. I would say in ideal conditions, two miles average, X yards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's the biggest issue I have. Uh, and then I would think by now they they would be smaller because I mean the Cardo's a little bit smaller than the Senna, but they're still bricks hanging off the side of your helmet. Yeah, but it, they have the Pack Talk Slim. Yes, they which do. has the yeah. exact same technology. All it does is move the battery back to back here, so it's it's slimmer as far as the profile you know, profile goes. But okay. I think that that's an easy thing. I mean, they've already got a, a fix for it. So, mm. I mean, I think really the the big killer is batteries. Yeah, battery technology is still well, and when you're making it that small, yeah, you're you're very restricted. Well, so the Cardo's what thirteen hour battery life i think 12 and some change uh we've got real-time testing into the 11 and a half 12s around there yeah and i know temperature plays a big factor Very big in factor. that um, but to, to be fair cena be fair. cena had the same performance battery yeah. wise yeah we we used it all the way up to uh paris and we got 11 hours out of it and we still had some charge on it mm. so um, Have you ever heard of Thokwok? Who? What did you call me? Don't talk about my mama. Thokwok? Thokwok? How do you spell that? T-H-O-K-W-O-K. 
W O K. Fuck walk. Holy shit. There, there's really no yeah. tho- thok woke. Uh, there's really no other way to say so it. So, according to the best reviews dot guide website of the 10 best motorcycle Bluetooth headsets as of July 2019, the Thok is number one. What's number two? Uh, Fod Sports. What's number three? Uh, Cena. Yeah. Uh, and it, okay. it, this it, is a bullshit it fucking say list. Which one. <laughs> and then Fod Sports again. And then Cena, and then Thokwok at number six again, number seven All Ross, number eight the Freed Con, not Freecom, Freed oh. Con, number nine is Yading. <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> no, up. Not making this this up. must be like a Chinese. It must be like a top seller. Thing. And then Cena again. What what Cena's at the top? Is it the Eva or the thirty K? Uh, it doesn't say. Because it's it's got. I'm thinking they went off of. Model sales because that sounds like some cheap ass shit well, that I'm, sold to a uh, bunch I'm, of people overseas. I'm thinking this is just no. A, it's saying it's got to be going off of sales because this 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 is the eighty dollar Cena. Yeah, the, the SMH the sale. SMH five. Oh my god! Not even the SMH ten. That's the one that Tyler has. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, or they're just yeah. They go off of that. They give you oh. the links and it gives you the the affiliate. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fuck. Fuck. Walk. Fuck. Walk. I've never even heard Currently, of. It. I haven't heard of that any of those. Sounds but very Chineseium to me. <laughs> currently unavailable on Amazon. Yeah, for the US side I bet. <laughs> yeah, go to Alibaba. I say get on Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say looking at the Bluetooth headsets we've had. Are we getting fucking buzzed? No, that's his fucking lawnmower yeah. dude every Friday. <laughs> God bless. Bro, what ta- what time is it? Fucking eight, eight fifteen 18. at night, and this dude's out there mowing his lawn. I don't want it to be too hot, you know. On man. Friday, fuck you, man. Um, <laughs> so, when we're looking at Bluetooth, what do we want to see from the future of these? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> hey, it's either going to be a lawnmower, a thunderstorm, or dogs. Or dogs. <laughs> at least I like thunderstorms. It's just so and funny because we talked about it last time. <laughs> it's just every fucking time. Well, we're going to have to go slip between and be like, dude, can we, can we move it to Thursday or Saturday, please? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or just tell him. Um, do it earlier. Do it early. Oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> He's consistent. He's so He's consistent. He's got a schedule. <laughs> well, actually, he didn't mow the last week and a half. Well, tell him. Give him the dates we're not recording so he can record every other Friday. <laughs> yeah, so he can mow every other Friday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, back to Bluetooth. <laughs> what headsets. were we talking about again? Um, <laughs> motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. Bluetooth communication. Something about motorcycles. Um, <laughs> what do we want to see in the future for Bluetooth? Uh, oh, God. Fucking so just a before, lot more ease of use. Yeah, I was going to say ease of use is going to be the biggest. So I will say that I'm pretty happy with the new Cardo. The, the Pack Talk Bolt has been pretty dope, especially when you compare it to other things that are out at the same price range. How easy did we connect them? Oh, God. That was stupid easy. Including power up and the time it takes for the group to actually... Because you guys connect faster than I do, or the, the group uh, starter does. Mm-hmm. So I will start it and then I'll add people in, and then when I you know, pretty much click it to say, hey, finalize this group, this is the group, it does take longer for me to, to finalize. But even if you take in power on and that extra time, it was a minute and a half tops. Yeah. And that's right out of the box, first time, n- never been connected before. But since it's now connected, power up and, I, and on. I just show up and yeah. Yeah. connect. It's, it's literally as, it is what Cena says that they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we would disconnect for yes. whatever reason. Yeah, our get saw when I sped off. You just pick it right back up. But as soon as we got close enough, it, it immediately connected. And what I loved about it is when we disconnected, it didn't sit there and beep boop, beep boop, beep boop. Oh beep, yeah, boop. it wouldn't. It wouldn't fucking search. Beep, beep, beep boop. No, it would or, just. Or it might have been searching, but it wouldn't fucking make no, noises. It, it made a. It made a beep when it disconnected, and then it made a beep when it connected. It was not just the intercom fail, intercom fail, just repeating actions over and over and over. They're just annoying as fuck. Yeah. We like disconnect I, I, and reconnect. Like I get it. It beeped. That means I disconnected. Yep. Or someone disconnected. Yeah. And then another beep. Okay, you're back. So from a reliability side, I'm still waiting for them to become as reliable as a CB. Because again, I had the CB on my Harley and it, it didn't matter. As soon as you're in range and you're on the same channel, you're connected. Um, I mean, it's, and it's really kind of 
getting there already. It is. It's close. Um, but I would say probably in the next two years, they'll be there. Yeah. And and going back to kind of both of those points is when I would – I would like a setup – like a like a walkie talkie as in push you to go talk, on that, to talk? not a, not a push to talk but as in you go into the app and set a six digit passcode one two seven eight six five anyone who puts in that passcode is in that group oh, okay okay and that, no fucking press and hold and wait for the light just go to the app or even oh just like when like you're trying to connect your phone to your car hey exactly. is this the right passcode is this the right passcode or the, and basically that is your group's code. Almost like a, you can almost think of it as like a, if you're old enough to remember party lines back yeah. in the day. I mean, I'm not old enough, but I hear my parents talk about it. Yeah. You call into a number and everyone that calls that number is in yep. the same, basically a, a group chat. Yeah, correct. Yep. Yeah, so. Um, back to push to talk. I would actually love to have that. Yeah. Just because I don't, that will cut out all road noise. It would. And if I'm jamming out to my my stereo through the speakers, the only time y'all would hear is if I hit the button. Yeah. Yeah. Or if we got within 700 feet of you. Yeah. 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 Something like that. Yeah. The only issue I see with that is passengers. Because, I mean, it'd be easy to do a, a bar mounted button press. But. Well, for a passenger, I mean, if you had the bar mount, you'd have two options. You'd have a unit mount and a bar mount. So the passenger would have to reach up and just and touch. touch. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like they're doing anything else back there anyways. Yeah. And then falling asleep and crashing into the back of your helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, to that point, the the Formula One crew chiefs have, have gone to push to talk. So they, they've got buttons on their thing and they just reach up and, and they do that for three days every other weekend. So yeah. it, could, it couldn't be that I mean, big of a deal. You know what they could do with something like that is, you know, you have a dedicated channel for your passenger. And then when you want to talk to the group, you hit your hit your push to talk and it opens it up to the group. So that I way like me that. and you can still have a conversation, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever. And then and then Faith would have her own channel for it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that's a, compli- like a piggyback. Yeah, and that's completely plausible. It's yeah. Not a crazy idea. Hmm. All right. So let's move away from Bluetooth comms and Let's talk about the bike dash cams. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm curious to see the, the popularity of these now that pretty much every single car on the road has one. Well, so I found one online that actually looked pretty fucking cool and it has a lot of really good reviews. Uh, it's the Moto Pro Cam 2. Aren't these the same guys that we found at uh, IMS? I think so. I think so. It looks very similar at least. But uh, so these, it's a dual cam setup, front and rear. <laughs> they have finance on here. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe you want to buy a bunch of them? Maybe. Um, but yeah, this one, it, it has a, a screen where you can actually go and make sure that both cameras are working. You can set up modes uh, so you can have like a picture in picture type of setup. And, but yeah, it records full HD, so 1080p. And I want to say the video's at 30p. Actually, the if you look at the specs, only one of them's 1080. What? The, yeah. That'd probably be the front camera. Front camera, 1080 and 720 for a rear camera. Well, that's fucking stupid. I agree. Why not just. Why not both? <laughs> yeah, why not both? <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm not going to talk about this group, but we'll talk about dash cams in general. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's important nowadays. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I've got a dash cam in one of my cars, and I'm getting ready to buy one for my car. Yeah. I mean, can you send me which one you bought? Because I think I'm just going to go with a regular dash cam. I'm tired of messing with my GoPro. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, oh, that's fine. <laughs> I just really liked his. I mean, it was it was it looked super easy and simple. I'm gonna buy a better one. Okay, uh, so I'll let you know how it goes. But the one that I have in there, it it's, all right. it's mostly functional. Okay, I just don't like the way it records and the sensitivities it has. Okay, yeah, mine. I I get, for those that have no idea what I'm talking about, I rigged a GoPro up to my 
Camaro, but I hardwired it in and it's, it's to the key. So it would only come on when you turn the key on. Problem with that is unless you stop it before you turn the key off, it corrupts, corrupts the, the files. files. And every time you turn it on, it would sit there and repair the files for like the first three or four minutes. Also, I found out that uh, it gets extremely hot. Oh, yeah. So, I'm sure. Yeah, it, it burnt up pretty quick. Or not burnt up, but it, it would shut off within the first three or four minutes in the summer. Oh, God. So that's, that's, that's what we deal with in Texas. I mean, that, that yeah. windshield gets stupid fucking hot. Oh, yeah. So, so back to motorcycle dash cams. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's important nowadays with everyone being lawsuit happy. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. I mean, look, the technology's there, and it's inexpensive. Look, if, if Faith would have had a camera for her motorcycle accident, we wouldn't have had to spend two years going to court over it. Yeah. yeah. It would have been an open and shut case. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, you know, places like Texas where it's a no-fault state, that gives your insurance company the means to say no your your people's paying 100 percent of this yeah. bill yeah it's not trying to split the well the rider was 30 percent at fault, at fault. And yep. the drivers oh, yeah. that's no fuck y'all which is such bullshit you know yeah but uh, it, it's good to protect yourselves and and again 150 bucks even 200 dollars for two cameras something that you can provide to the police and provide to youtube because you know yeah. content oh yeah but just that it's it's an extra piece of insurance uh, and and inexpensive insurance yeah yeah you know like 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 this one it's listed right now for 146 bucks yeah i mean how much is it with the gps it's like twenty dollars more, I think. What is the Jeep? Is that like kind of like an anti-theft thing? Like no. it's where you can it, track it, track your speed. It's speed it's, location. It's showing where you were at when. Ah, the, well, gotcha. So this one, it, it records it as two separate files, and you can then put it in your computer. So if you wanted to have a voiceover, and that was your moto vlog style, you could have the GPS coordinates, and you could actually put that like an overlay. I've seen, I've watched videos where they've got the overlay yeah. on their video where it yeah. shows where they're driving to. Yeah, I and then it shows that. speed and speed and location. Yeah, yeah. it'd be really cool for ADV bikes. Show right. like how fucking far off the grid they are. Well, yeah. and if it, you know, if it and it's saving it, then you would know. Hey, that was a good road. Yeah, or yeah. that was a terrible road. That's another thing. Yeah. So something like this, it's it's stupid easy to put in. You hardwire it to your bike, and you can have it to where it loops. So if you're using it as a dash cam only, you know, it, have it loop on a 10-minute cycle. Yeah. Uh, I would even go further than that. I would an hour. On most of them, you can set to fill up the card. So as wherever your card is at, it would record 32 gigabytes, and at the end of that, it starts – chewing from the back yeah. basically yeah which that's a lot of footage <laughs> so that one yeah. says it's got a sos button yeah what's that do obviously SOS so if you're button. in an situ- if you're in an accident you can hit a button so and even with, it would send it out so even with the gps and the sos button it only jumps it to 170 bucks yeah yeah can you scroll down just so i can see the the premium features <laughs> Yeah, the SOS is it record it locks in that video. It doesn't actually alert anybody. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna say that there's no way it's 170 uh, bucks for that. It's it's 30 seconds before the accident and 30 seconds after. I definitely have that. I agree. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Camera mounts are compatible with any GoPro mount. Mm-hmm. I oh. like that. I already have those stuck all over my bike already. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, something like this, very inexpensive, and I think it's worth it, especially like on our bikes. You could put it right underneath your headlight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just mount it there because it, it has the option to you can actually screw it in, but it also comes with the 3M tape. The 3M tape is good you stuff. Pop it up use the real 3M tape. Yeah. yeah. Pop that on there and underneath your tour pack. Under the tour pack. Oh, yeah. Or put it underneath your saddlebag or something. Yeah. Something that will pick up the angle <laughs> straight behind you. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, something like that. It's just it's, – it's too important nowadays not to have something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
We've talked a lot about a lot of stuff in this episode. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about uh, before we go into the closing argument is a tracking device. Oh, yeah, we talked yeah. about that in the group chat. So, yeah. yeah, you mentioned that you've you've got tracking devices on your bikes. Yeah. Uh, and I looked that up, and the the cost to the month or the annual plan on it is it, the the ass kicker. Yeah, yeah. that's Cause the nail the unit, coffin. Because the unit was what fifty bucks. Yeah, and then for one unit, what did I, what did I say? It was like two hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah, it's two hundred dollars a year. A year, yeah. God, that's high. <laughs> and <laughs> and I my renewal on the insurance i'm not getting enough of a discount Mm -hmm. to make it worthwhile and let's face it do you want your bike back after it's been stolen not really no unless it has some sort of sentimental value Yeah, like the the honorary one who had his grandfather's hatchet or something in the saddlebag i mean but i'd want that back what's the chances you're going to get that they trash that though yeah Yeah. they, they tossed they'd got that bike somewhere and they fucking just tossed everything yeah uh so maybe like super custom bikes you know show bikes and stuff like that i could i could see that i mean hell i've got it on my car and i only get a 50 dollar uh discount a year yeah, yeah. the reason that the discounts have dropped so much because they used to be pretty substantial yes the reason they've dropped so much is because especially on bikes it's so easy to find it's so easy to disconnect i mean there's only so much surface area you can put it on oh yeah i mean Anybody who knows anything about bikes, which let's let's face it, if they're jacking bikes, they probably know they can probably disassemble a bike in two hours, yeah, or less. Yeah, they they're going to find it, it. They're going to strip it. They're going to tear it off. It's going to be gone by the time you even. Oh yeah. Turn your your phone on to try to track it. Like, but it would have a lock on its last location before it got ripped off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but with a low jack ending their support for motorcycles there's not a lot of options out there yeah um the other side of it too is you don't necessarily want to get one that would notify the police because some people want to handle it themselves (laughs) (laughs) it's true a little street justice yeah yeah i mean you stole my bike okay you're gonna meet mr louisville slugger or you're gonna meet mr 45 caliber yeah and yeah, there's some legality issues there, but... What? <laughs> I mean, hey, I knew where it was. I went to go ask for it back, and they got violent. Yeah, he's coming right for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've all seen the South Park episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... The only reason that I would even remotely think about investing in one of these is if my bike was constantly at a threat of being stolen. Mm-hmm. If I lived in an apartment complex, if yeah, I didn't have a garage, if I lived in a bad neighborhood. Yeah, because then, you know, because it's got at least the one yours has has geofencing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, I just, <sighs> for me, it's it's not worth it. The chances of my bike getting stolen are so low. It's going to happen at an event. If it yeah. does happen, oh, yeah. it's we'll going to happen. We'll at be out of town. We're going to be out of town. We're going to be staying at an Airbnb or, heck, even if you think of the honor one, he was at a rally downtown amongst every other bike yeah that's the a, easiest place to seal it in a well-lit parking sight. lot you yeah. know yeah so and he had the special too so his had security on it so they couldn't start it I, i've heard that every bike that's stolen is just they get a bunch of guys around they start pushing it they're like yeah my battery's dead we're gonna just push up to the, my buddy's house yeah and push no it one, push it up to my truck yeah and no one fucking says a thing yep so yeah i or, I mean, I've even read stories about people who have helped people. Yes. Steal, steal a bike, bike accidentally. Like, like, oh, fuck, you know, I, I need some help pushing. Oh, you need some help pushing it? Yeah, I man. thought that was happening to me at um, the uh, Giddy Up Chopper Show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because everyone was parking <laughs> on that bank, and I see two guys pushing this bike and struggling. And they're like, hey, man, can you give us a hand? I'm like, <laughs> and then they go, this isn't my bike. I'm like, okay. So obviously they're, they've admitted this is not theirs. He <laughs> yeah. goes, his bike just rolled down the hill and fell over. Just trying to, to pick it up. So it doesn't sit here <laughs> yeah. and, you know, drain out all the gas and all and everything. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I'm not, I've heard those stories where people oh, yeah. accidentally help someone steal a bike. And then, you know, an hour later, some guy comes, where the fuck is my bike? And they're like, uh, is, is it the, the gray one with the black bars? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some assholes pushed it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely did not help them. Um, 
So yeah, I'm I'm done with the GPS trackers. Um, the the reason I got the one I got was because I was going to do the hookah hay, and you have to have the what? It's the hookah hay challenge. Bless you. You never heard of this? Are you no. making shit up? No. It's like the thok walk. <laughs> You've never heard of hookah hay? <laughs> Don't look at me. He's asking questions too, <laughs> bitch. <the> fuck? <laughs> Okay, so for those who don't know, the Hookah Hay Challenge is a endurance race. Okay. That goes through 48 states and all the provinces of Canada. Sounds terrible. Why? <laughs> Why do people do anything? Um, but, oh, well, yeah, a quarter million dollar stupid. purse. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's that. Uh, and Harley gives you a brand new bike. Jeez. I've um, never heard of this. I've never heard of it either. Yeah, it starts in Arizona. And then they have different routes. And the whole thing is you cannot, like, you cannot sleep indoors. You have to sleep next to your bike nope. outside. Okay. You have to, it, all of it. And it doesn't heard, matter what yeah. bike you're on, but I think everyone who's won it has been on a BMW. Yeah. Um, I've heard of something similar to this, but it was a little bit more hard. Well, no, this it, this is the most hardcore endurance race. Okay. Sounds just terrible. So the l- on the streets. On the length, yes, you are correct. But I was listening to Motorcycle Men, and they were talking about a race that goes from the East Coast to the West Coast. You cannot use a bike made after, like, 1960. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard about that one. Yeah, yeah and, and it this. follows the same you can't sleep indoors rules. Yeah. Yeah. You have to basically live like you're crossing the country in the 1940s. Yeah. And uh, you could, well, you no, I thought it was something like you could only you could you couldn't go and pay for something, but you know if you found someone and like, hey, can I crash at your place? And just yes, yeah. So yeah, this found, one you can have a tent, you can sleep inside your tent, but you're not allowed to sleep inside. Oh, what and if I then take my tent inside? States, God. And, and Canada and the Canadian provinces. So now you gotta have a fucking passport. Fuck Canada. But, but yeah, <laughs> you gotta have a passport. That's what you're worried about. <laughs> but they got, hey, they got weed up in Canada. Yeah. And then brothels, apparently. Yes. Which I Our didn't sh- fucking know. Yeah, the strip clubs are all brothels. That You think of Canadians as like these, oh, hey, I'm sorry, hey, and then... You oh, they're super nice. Fucking, Why do you think they're yeah. super nice? I think they're so fucking nice. Because they're getting high and getting their dicks sucked. That's yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um, hard to be in a bad mood <laughs> after that. Right? <laughs> I mean, I, I would think. I, I don't know for, for sure. You never had a whorehouse? Never, never had sex? No. Never had your dick sucked? Not while high, No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've never been. Well, I've been to a whorehouse. I've not been inside of a whore. Well, our rub and tug is the same. We're not talking about your ex girlfriends here. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, like any of them were, were rich enough to afford a house. You're funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking one bedroom apartments. <laughs> Step into my whore apartment. <laughs> my, my whore studio. My whore studio. <laughs> This this this, this episode's, episode's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna call it the random shit. L and some bike tech. And some bike tech. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's go into the the closing argument. Oh boy, another um, off the top of the head one, or did you actually write this one down somewhere else? No, no, it's it's. I, I think I'm gonna off have to the go. top of your sleepy ass head. Yeah, that this. Uh, oh god, uh, we're going to the folder. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> I don't even know if I have anything left. God, I hope you don't. I hope you run into a fucking wall right here. <laughs> oh, such a, you don't even know what file it's in. <laughs> such a dick. I, don't know, I have a closing argument. Oh, there it is. Oh damn. Okay. <laughs> Watch, it's fucking empty. <laughs> it's the plain all, white page. All the stuff is lined out. Uh, like, oh, uh, no, did that. Is that loaded? That. It's still loading. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, come on. <laughs> There's two. God damn. Wow. Oh, it's, oh, it's, is it still trying? Uh, no, no. You've, the, got, you've got two. I've got two left. God. I say we do both of them just to clear this out. Uh, how, wait, where are we at time-wise? I don't want to get into a fucking rabbit hole if we're already friggin' over an hour long. Well, the the ad break we, we are already day. over an hour long. Over an hour, <laughs> but I was gone for like eight minutes for the. Uh, okay, we'll, right, we'll we'll just do one. Pick one. Okay, what is more important when it comes to a motorcycle? Style, power, or comfort? Are we only allowed to pick one, or are we going to distribute a hundred percent amongst the three? One. Fuck. Uh. Ken, <laughs> <laughs> this is a stupid fucking question. <laughs> Okay, you sure, can sure. tell you can tell we scraped this off the bottom of the right. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go with comfort. Okay. Because if because if I'm comfortable, then I can. It doesn't matter how much power is there. Mm-hmm. I mean, as long as it has enough power to move my ass, you know, at highway speeds. Comfort. I need it. I don't get style. I don't give a fuck what it looks like. I mean, but you bought your road glide because you thought it looked cool. You're right, but we're see we're, that was that was <laughs> Why then. Do you go this for the is touring now. family. Sure. But but I did get a touring bike for okay. a reason. Yeah. Comfort. Yeah. But so yeah, comfort. I would definitely comfort is where I need it at. Okay. Justin. So, I mean, obviously the the obvious answer is comfort because you don't want to buy a bike that's uncomfortable, but I'm going to say style. And the only reason I do that is because on my most recent, you know, design, the Chubby Shuttle, it was all about style. I didn't think about what performance upgrades I was going to do, how comfortable it was going to be, how long I could ride it. Is it does it does it look cool? Sure. And that's okay. Fair enough. And I, I've already I already have people telling me on on the social medias of how terrible it looks. No, how I should <laughs> how Damn, I should do this there. instead of this, or how I needed. It. It's only going to be cool if I do the 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 fucking stage three and do 120 horsepower and blah, 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 blah. And that I, they say that and I'm like, okay, whatever. So obviously I don't care about power. I don't care about comfort when it comes to this build. Uh, but style was my first thing in mind. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mine is comfort. 100%. That's, I got into the road glides because of how cool they were, but I wanted a touring bike because at that time I rode a lot of miles. Yep. So I wanted something that I could actually ride the shit out of. So cool. All right. So the chubby shuttle is all style, no comfort or power. And that build will be starting within the month. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, little stuff. I'm not going to be tearing it apart, but bars, crash guard. I just need to know when I need to come up. New fender. Yeah. Not new fender. Um, I'm I'm the one that shows up. (laughs) Damn. 187 in progress. (laughs) (laughs) Please send additional units. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace.